very warm welcome to the Trading Bells show. My name is Maina Shagge. Thank you so much for joining us. Tonight, we speak to the Chief Business Officer, Mbide Mwema, to understand what's the state of the market. Is this a good time for you as a buyer? Mbide Mwema, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Maina, for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here on this show. Absolutely. It's been some time since you're on the Trading Bell, but this is good timing. It's half here, uh, and uh, we are seeing ups and downs, moving ons, and uh, we can't wait to get to understand how the market is doing. In fact, my first question to you would be this. What's the state of the market as we speak? Well, that's always an interesting question, and I'm looking at it from well, the last time I was here and where we are at now. Yeah. But um, just looking at the market, what we've done this year, the market is actually down 23% on a year-to-date basis in local currency. If you convert that to dollars, it's down um, about 31% on a year-to-date basis. Yeah. Certainly, that's not good for anybody who's saying that I've probably eroded my value from the beginning of the year till now. But what we've seen is that what is happening in Kenya is not unique to us. It's something that has been happening globally, and this has actually been affected mm. by the fact that the interest rates in the U.S. have been on an upward trajectory, mm -hmm. which has caused an outflow of uh, hard currency yeah. from uh, developing and emerging and frontier markets, mm -hmm. Kenya being part of that uh, basket that has actually been impacted by foreign investors selling out. Okay. So the sellout of this investors then has really caused um, the downturn. Mm. But interestingly, minor now as we're looking at the statistics, we've actually seen the foreign investors slowly become a net buyers of our exchange. Oh. So that is a good indication for us, at least for the upcoming months. Okay. I love that summary. And does that mean then that for local investors, this is their time to actually cash in? Because, you know, with the flight, it means there's an opportunity. So the interesting thing when we look at our market is, yes, there has uh, been an erosion on price. But then the erosion on price is purely um, reflective of demand and supply dynamics. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, our market has been traded about 60 to 65 percent by the foreign investors. Yeah. But this year, following on from last year, we've actually seen a switch. Mm -hmm. We've seen the local investors become 60 percent, wow. whereas the foreign investors were about 40, 42 percent. Wow. Meaning that they were consistently selling out of the market mm -hmm. and largely looking at our macro situation. And there was a bit of a jitteriness that came out of that. Okay. But now we've actually seen them begin to come back and become net buyers. So the first thing is demand and supply okay. has actually eroded value. But if you actually look at the underlying companies and the fundamentals, and yeah, I normally follow your show. You look at the yes. banking sector, Absolutely. you look at the results of different um, entities that are listed on the NSC. Yeah. And most of the results that we have seen that reflected the performance for last year and mm -hmm. a better part of this year have actually been positive. Mm -hmm. So that actually tells us that the valuations we're seeing today are not necessarily reflecting the fundamentals of this company. All right. Mina, mm -hmm. actually, if you look at our market from the year 2009, yeah. this is the lowest valuation multiple that mm -hmm. we are trading at. Yeah. And how you look at it simply is to say you can actually get good opportunities in different sectors mm -hmm. if you're very selective and you have a long term perspective mm -hmm. and be able to make a return because you're buying good companies at a discounted level. Yeah. And more importantly, we are getting indicators that then the demand that used to be there back in the day slowly trickling back, which could actually then po um, position the market for a better trajectory in terms of a recovery into this year, second half of the year, and also into 2024. Wow, certainly the opportunity is there for people to talk about. Numerous, numerous. Numerous ones, right? Numerous. Some good news. I've seen, especially the, the Safaricom share really ramp up and really heat it up. There's a time there were concerns. Where are we going when it hit the 13 levels? But now playing all around to 19, 20, which is good news. And I think, what are the reasons for the rally? And do you think we should expect more demand in the second half of this particular year, such a share? That's a good question. And you're right. Every time the Safaricom goes down, it actually implicates and has a direct impact on the performance of our market mm -hmm. because of its um, weight in the market. Mm -hmm. So on a good day, typically Safaricom is almost half of uh, the value traded yeah. as well as half of the market capitalization. Absolutely. So of course, that deep had a direct impact on the performance of the market. Mm -hmm. But we've actually seen um, a comeback on it. Mm -hmm. And this, thing, this has actually been driven by the foreign investors. Now, when foreign investors are looking at our market, they look at three key things at a macro perspective. Yeah. Minor, they look at inflation, mm -hmm. they look at the level of interest rates, and they look at valuation of hard currency. Yeah. Interest rates have been rising. You're right. Inflation has been rising. 
But the key thing that they've been looking at is the currency, which has been weakening mm -hmm. over last year into this year, mm -hmm. and also access to that. So there was a bit of a challenge last year, yeah. but then this year that challenge has abated. Mm -hmm. And that challenge has abated, making it easier for people to access hard currency mm -hmm. and to repatriate dollars if they so desire. Okay. That is a standing issue for us, but it's not in isolation. Mm -hmm. We've seen Egypt, we've seen Nigeria, we've seen other countries in the frontier space actually have worse situations. Mm -hmm. There are countries where investors actually have to wait up to six months to wow. access hard currency when they've exited a position. Uh -huh. For us in Kenya today, it's just a matter of weeks. Okay. And secondly, Maina, what we've seen is um, the conversation between Kenya and the IMF mm -hmm. and the fact that the IMF has been able to then say, you're in a good place, you're getting better. The macros are actually becoming better, at mm -hmm. least in the short to the medium term. Yeah. So that has been a positive signal for our, our economy. Mm -hmm. And so for foreign investors now, they're looking and saying, okay, there are actually good opportunities that are cheap here. Mm -hmm. The macro situation is not necessarily going to get worse. It's getting better. And now we are beginning to look at the fiscal policies and seeing where will fiscal consolidation go? What will the government do in terms of managing its budgets, yeah. which has an implication on interest rates? So I think we're in a space where it wasn't as bad as it was mm -hmm. three to six months ago. Yeah. We're in a space where investors are saying, okay, this dynamics could not get any worse. Yeah. And we've actually seen a lot of interventions from the banking sector, from the central bank governor and the new governor who's in place, mm -hmm. from the capital market, all coming in to solidify the, the opportunity sets that are available in the capital markets today. Okay. Let me jump in, especially for the viewers who are watching, and most of them are investors, some yes. potential ones as well. And if you don't know, the market is currently trading uh, at a discount, which is commendable for anybody who wants to buy in. My question to you is this, is this the best time for especially retail and institutional investors to buy in? If you're looking at, at investments in the NSC, you're not just looking at shares. Any person who's looking at investment opportunities has two categories. Yes. So if I'm a local investor, I have different opportunity sets. Mm -hmm. I can invest in a SACO, mm -hmm. I can invest in uh, government um, treasury bills, yeah. in government uh, treasury bonds, in government infrastructure bonds. There are numerous opportunities out there. And then there's also the shares. Mm -hmm. If you're a foreign investor and you're looking at shares and you're saying, I can invest in shares in Kenya, I can invest in shares in Nigeria, I can invest in shares in Egypt, all the way to Pakistan, depending on what your mandate is. So that really has to be a, a personal decision of how does my portfolio look like? What should I do? But this is the case for shares. Today, you're buying good companies at a fraction of their value. Yeah. You're buying good companies at a fraction of their value. Secondly, you're buying good companies that have been paying you dividends and are actually yielding dividend yields of as high as 14%. Mm -hmm. Just buying a stock and saying, I'll buy this stock and I'll keep earning a dividend. That means you can actually hold it for five, between five to seven years and make your money back. Okay. Second question you're asking yourself. What is the outlook of the Kenyan economy? Mm -hmm. I know today we're in a space where the political risk is a bit high. Yeah. But then it's asking yourself, will this political risk continue unabated mm -hmm. or not? Yeah. So when people are a bit fearful, then it's to ask yourself, all these factors that are dampening sentiment, are they affecting the fundamentals of the company? If not, then pick a good sector and come in. So in other words, what I'm saying, now is the trough. We've never been this. This has been the lowest we've been in so long then you actually want to start speaking and choosing the stocks that you get into and continue for the short to the medium term. I think there are excellent opportunities. Come to the stock market, pick your stocks. And especially for now, the retail investors. Maina, we all know retail investors. We are betting. Yes. We are doing Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we You're are right. always giving. You're always um, giving your friend, Nikona Kahasol. They give you money and it disappears. Yeah. You never see it back. So now I'm saying, actually come and buy stocks here, earn dividend, make money when the market goes up, and actually become an investor. So to answer you, yes, this is a good time to actually come into the market to look at the opportunities. But by now, you have to do your homework. Yeah. I know most people at times are like, they said, let's buy. You're like, what are you buying? Are you, you know, I always look at it when I go to... Nivers. Yeah. We all go to Nivers, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. When we walk in, you can't walk aimlessly and say, you know, today I felt oh, like no, I no, wanted whatever. to shop, whatever, <laughs> and gets its way to... No, you go with, this is my plan, what do I want? Yeah, right. And any time you go to like maybe the bread section, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There are numerous choices. So you look at it and say, which one 
fits me, which one do I like, which one can I, what am I buying for many, am I buying? So th in that same way, then you want to en engage the intermediaries, mm -hmm. and that's the stock brokers and the investment banks. You can get a list of them from the NSC website and begin to ask them, what opportunities can I tap into mm -hmm. in at this point in time? Yeah. And secondly, to that conversation, the institutional investors from uh, the local markets have actually been allocating funds mm -hmm. to our market. They've also been net buyers because they're seeing opportunities. Mm -hmm. Someone who bought Safaricom at 14, and is now at 19 shillings. Yeah, ripping. Easy. Yep. So if you're looking for a 10, 20% return over mm -hmm. a short period of time, yeah. it's asking yourself, how can this price move from 19? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? Where does it need to bid to so that I can make a 10% return? Yeah, right. Looking at the banking stocks, if I'm looking for a 10, 15% return, mm -hmm. what does it need to get to? Is that feasible? Absolutely feasible. Absolutely feasible. Wow. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more questions on how you're doing with the government of the day. Okay. We're taking a break right here on the trading bell. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the trading bell. We are speaking to Mbida Moyama, the chief business officer right here at the Nairobi Securities Exchange, really trying to dissect half year and how the state of the market is. Mbida, we stopped at encouragement of how people should buy in at this particular season. And you mentioned a few things that you know, there are many ways of entry, especially for our retail investors. And I wanted you to expand a little bit on that for a minute or so. I know it could be a whole conversation. Yes. What is this that anybody who's watching with a 2K, 5K, 10K, and, and, you know, you can see, you know, entries for them. So there are numerous opportunities, and uh, I wish the camera was rolling when you were on break, but <laughs> nonetheless, I think we, we were discussing the fact that for retail investors, you can either come into the spot market, which is not buying all the stocks that are behind it, You're right. But we also have the derivatives market mm -hmm. where you actually buy uh, stocks, but you actually put a fraction of what you'd put in into the main market. Yeah. Now, what happens with the derivatives? You can either use them to hedge against loss mm -hmm. if the market is coming down. Yeah. But if the market is going up, you can actually use them to make a profit mm -hmm. as the market is getting into a recovery. Yeah. We've agreed that the market is actually getting into a recovery. Absolutely. We've seen Safarico move from 14 to 19. Mm -hmm. Now, I was discussing with my team and we were asking ourselves, what are the opportunities in this current quarter mm -hmm. that people should pay attention to? Mm -hmm. And we saw something very interesting on derivatives. We actually saw, if you could actually go long on a yeah. Safari come September contract, mm -hmm. you only need to put in as little as about 2,100 shillings. Wow. And that could almost, like that could take you almost to about 5,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. So you buy the contract and you're buying it at Safaricom at 19. If Safaricom moves to about 20.5, 21 shillings, you're in the money. You're in the money. So this, we're not, we're not giving investment advice, but we were looking and saying, what are the opportunities? Mm -hmm. And this retail investor is the same person who puts money on betting, is the same person who puts money in uh, Shara's. Yeah. Is the same person who from Friday to Sunday is drinking. <laughs> We've seen, I mean, this 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 week the nation did say that we are, uh, I mean, the nation has a lot nation. of people who are drinking, <laughs> which is very sad. Yeah. So we are saying, just get as little as 2,000, put your skin in the game mm -hmm. and understand how it works and open a derivatives account. I mean, we have all the stockbrokers, money stockbrokers and investment banks that are offering this opportunity. Go to the NSC website, look at any of the companies there, engage with them and tell them, I want to actually engage in derivatives. Mm -hmm. So with as little as 2,000 shillings, you're asking, what's the contract that I'm buying now? You're right. So, and that, the conversation we want to have with as many retail investors is to actually help you unpack. How do you actually come into the market? Do I come into A? Do I come into platform B? Do I come into platform C? But I think now for derivatives and most of this young retail investors are either betting or doing US stocks, Pay attention to that. You can actually make money as the market is going up with a fraction of the amount of money you'd actually put in into the spot market. So I think that's something that people need to pay attention to. And yeah. as always, we are more than happy yeah. to engage with them. And we can even think about doing a Twitter space or a social media space between yourself and ourselves just mm -hmm. to be able to curate that interest and help people appreciate how you can literally come in step by step. Absolutely. And maybe to let our viewers know that, you know, what check on our social media handles and uh, one of these find is very soon we are getting to the spaces and all that. Yes. Let's move on to some recent developments that happened, especially with the new government that came in. We saw the president very keen on the markets and everything as he came, visited and made um, some announcements. And uh, hopefully we might see some of the state-owned enterprises really get to list. And, and I know there's a conversation that is ongoing and um, we held a conversation as well on the Trading Mills show with the PS, Abu Bakr Hassan. And he was quite optimistic on the strides that we are making. You sit on the desk that sees this all happening. 
What's the status and what can you tell investors? Oh, these companies are coming. You better have They're your coming. account open and ready. <laughs> you know what we've done at, as the NSC? Yeah. We actually have an EIPO platform. Mm. So when these opportunities come or subsequent opportunities come, they'll just go to your phone. And okay. you'll be able to be to actually immediately tap into these opportunities. Wow. But nonetheless, yes. where we are at, it's uh, the privatization bill is the one that had been taken to parliament. Yeah. That needs to go through the entire parliamentary process mm -hmm. for then the privatization process to actually begin. Yeah. So that is really um, from uh, the government's perspective. Mm -hmm. But as the capital markets, we are very keen and we are very excited to be able to host these companies. And the government has some very interesting opportunities yeah. that they can bring. Mm -hmm. So we are optimistic, mm -hmm. and I think we are seeing a recovery in the markets as the valuations are coming up. Yeah. So we do see that opportunity coming to a doorstep near yeah, your literally to your phone yeah. near you very very soon. Very optimistic, and I think also what we've done as the capital markets is we are engaging with different um, entities. Ministry of Investment and Trade and Industry, mm -hmm. National Treasury, um, the Office of the President, to ensure that our infrastructure is ready when they are ready. Okay. But over and above that, when His Excellency Dr. William Ruto also came here, he left us with a challenge. Mm -hmm. He said one for one. He said, if I bring six, you yeah. better look for six <laughs> from the private sector. Yeah. So we have been working very hard. Mm -hmm. There is a round table of uh, the capital market um, industry. Our CEOs and the chairman of the entities that make up the capital markets have actually been on a strategic push to actually go meet companies and invite them to list. Yeah. And on that basis, we're actually hoping to be able to have some positive news in this second half of the year. Mm -hmm. We are seeing interest. We are repositioning the value proposition okay. for the NSC as an exit strategy mm -hmm. for you and looking into coming into the market and creating liquidity for your shareholders, as it were. Wow. We're looking forward to this, definitely. Oh, yes. We're going to be ready we for it. We are so, our bells are ready. <laughs> They're ready. Very ready. All right. As we come to the close of this conversation, I have two um, sort of areas I would like you to comment on. One of it is I have been seeing you and, of course, the leadership uh, hosting some of the delegations from other African countries. I'd like to know, are we seeing uh, sort of a more scaling up of the interlinkage of exchanges? And of course, you've also been having forums with SMEs and talking to them. And uh, I would want to know what's the agenda and what's going down there. Okay. Please. Now, our market, as I said earlier, is um, a lot of the trading activities dominated by foreign investors. Yeah. But the domicile of the foreign investors has traditionally been the United Kingdom, the United States of America, and South Africa. Mm. So as an industry, then, we have been asking ourselves, how can we actually get different pools of capital to come and engage mm -hmm. so that we can manage the situation of demand and supply? So all these um, entities that come in here, all the delegations that come in here, we are then working with the government to say, as you're having um, government to government um, engagements, mm -hmm. can we actually open up our markets to them for them to see the opportunities? Yeah. Some of the things we're exploring is cross listings. Mm -hmm. How can we have companies that are cross listed from those countries into here? Yeah. How can you have companies cross listed from here to there? And it also ties in with the privatization agenda because it's trying to get a pool of capital that was not otherwise looking at our markets. Yeah. Second other important thing on that mm -hmm. is the Africa Free Continental Trade Area, yep. AFCTEA. Yeah. And that has been a great opportunity, at least for governments and businesses. Mm -hmm. But then for us as a capital markets, we are exploring it. And we want to get to the place where we can actually go to a company such as Dangote mm -hmm. and say, if you're open, having your operations yeah. and you want to set up in East Africa, why not list on the NSC and raise capital from there? Conversely, for Equity Bank, as they're expanding into the region, then we want to be able to say, why don't you actually use our linkages as African uh, stock exchanges and the association of that and go to another country that you're getting into and raise capital for your operations in that company, in that um, country and in that stock exchange yeah. so that now we are using domestic capital to support operations of a pan-african nature in the domicile countries yeah. so that's a very exciting opportunity that we actually see mm -hmm. all right you know actually you just mentioned something about corporates and thinking about because sometimes and i've had you in, in a forum speak and say that listen the market is not just about the trading of shares yes. we also here to help companies raise you know debt for their operations and the like and i'm keen to ask how is this going and uh, are we still seeing appetites from corporates and institutions? There's a lot of appetite. And uh, as always, there's always something unique about Kenya. So today, about 99% of the funding comes from the banking sector. Yes. But you know, when you actually look at the history of mm. um, capital raising uh, on the NSC, once 
the capital that was raised here actually surpassed the banking sector. Absolutely. And that was when Safaricom IPO happened. Yeah. We looked at the amount of new capital that was raised in mm. the banking sector vis-a-vis mm. -vis the industry, and Safaricom actually surpassed all the capital that had been raised in the banking sector. Yeah. That tells us that ideally the capital markets can be a space for raising capital. Yeah. But what we are saying is we don't want to compete with the banking sector. We want to complement the banking sector. Okay. We are in an interest uh, rate environment that's on the rise. Mm -hmm. So that is rising, making it very expensive for companies to raise money. You're right. Our proposition is then consider the capital markets for corporate bonds. Mm -hmm. And here's the difference between corporate bonds and your typical bank debt. Mm -hmm. When you borrow a, uh, a loan minor yeah. from the first uh, point you start making your payments, yeah. you pay principal mm -hmm. and you pay interest. Yeah. Now for our corporate bonds, you don't pay principal. You pay interest only two times in a year. Oh. So you're managing your cash flow. Okay. Then you pay your principal at the end of five years. Mm. That's the when uh, your bond expires. Yes. So what we've actually seen is then companies coming to us and saying, we want to manage our cash flows mm. for new projects. Yeah. So what do we need to do mm. to raise a corporate bond in the market? Okay. Minimum size, 50 million. Mm -hmm. 50 million is really a company that has revenues of 100 million. Yeah. They, can f enough, uh, they can actually afford to raise an opportunity of 50 million in our markets today. Mm. Those are the companies that we are looking at. So that if you actually raise 50 million shillings, if you were to raise it at uh, 15%, each and every single month you're paying principal and interest to the bank. Yeah. If you raise the 50 million here, you're only paying 15% every single year, mm -hmm. and then you pay the 50 million after your five years. That allows you to get into a project, Absolutely. break even, make money, and manage your cash flow. Sure. Second point, my is actually, Last year, it was me knocking on as many doors as I can. Yeah. This year, people are saying, <laughs> how does this thing work? <laughs> you know, people are calling and saying, how do your corporate bonds work? What do I need to do? Yeah. How quickly can I be able to, to raise funding? Mm -hmm. Because it's a good proposition. Mm -hmm. Because in this interest rate environment, you really have to manage your sources of funding. Yeah. Otherwise, you could get to a point where your projects no longer give you a return that is more than um, what you have to pay out to the bank. Mm -hmm. So this has been very interesting, and that's something that we are propositioning. Yeah. Now, I know we are about to come to the end, but I did want to talk about something that we've been on MSMEs. Please. Over and above the corporate bonds, mm -hmm. we have uh, set up a platform that mm -hmm. is uh, called NSC Connect. Okay. It's an investor screening platform mm -hmm. where you can actually come in as an SME. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for equity, if you're looking for debt, you can be able to raise either of the two off of this platform. Ah. We've actually come up with a very interesting proposition for these SMEs. Okay. Now, we appreciate an SME is not like a multinational. Absolutely. Neither is it a large corporate. Certainly. So the requirements are very different. Yeah. So what we've said is, how do we actually cater to these SMEs that contribute about 80% of the activity mm -hmm. in terms of what happens in our Kenyan economy? You're right. So we said we have our strategy in terms of getting them in. We said, first and foremost, coming through Iboka, mm -hmm. which is an incubator program that yeah. prepares you for capital raising. Yeah. Secondly, when you come in, if you are registered, you have your annual reports, and you know what your funding need is, come on to NSC Connect. So NSC Connect effectively look as, looks at your financials. It gives you a ranking on your business score, how your business strategy is looking like, how are your financials looking like, what does your corporate governance look like, do I have a board, do you have, mm. what are you th doing about your internal processes. Yeah. Then it also gives you evaluation. So you can actually come on there and say, how do I look like? It's yeah. a mirror. Yeah. Right? You know, the thing with SMEs, they think they're here. You're always thinking up there. But you're here. Yeah, man. So... <laughs> it's, it's good to bridge that gap. Yes. And then at the end of it, then it asks you, do you want to raise equity? Do you want to raise debt? Mm -hmm. Then that platform then actually is open to financial partners yeah. who we've actually engaged with, who then come and look for the opportunities. And it doesn't just focus on Nairobi. It actually needs opportunities across all the 47 counties. Wow. Then once you get to that point, if a company wants to invest in you and says, I want to, put, uh, to buy shares, or I'm happy to give you um, a bond, if you're raising debt, mm -hmm. then the next step is we come into the growth and enterprise market segment of the NSC, which is a segment that was purely curated for SMEs. You come and get into that segment. It's a very simple process in less than a month you're in. Mm -hmm. And now as you're engaging with the investors, you can actually facilitate your transactions on the NSC. 
So it provides a liquidity platform. Okay. And if you don't want to be on the NSC, we have an unquoted securities platform. Mm -hmm. We are now calling it Soko Rahisi. Yes. Like, come bring your SME. Let people evaluate the risk. Let yes. people see what opportunities are there. Let them put money in. Really good, you yeah. grow your business. Mm -hmm. So as we grow it, that's what we want to do. And we are hoping, uh, I mean, we will be launching it in the month of August. We hope you can be there to um, at least oversee the events. Mm -hmm. But we want to welcome as many of you as possible just right. to engage with us. Mm -hmm. We are going to different associations, speaking to them about it. Yeah. And we think it's a great opportunity to just bring the investors and all the opportunities together and for people to appreciate that these are SMEs, the risks are a bit higher. But if you appreciate those risks, then you can be able to price those risks. So that's very exciting for us. It's exciting news. That's August, right? Yes. So we're looking forward to that. Yes, we are. You know, maybe that we could go and on and on yes, and on. We <laughs> But certainly we have to come to a close on this, but definitely we'll be reaching out again to okay. just understand the progress and what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I have to give you 30 seconds to one message to investors. Okay. Uh, what's your last word for them? Straight to the camera. So two things mm -hmm. for investors. Look at this as an opportunity for you to buy entities that are offered to you at a discount for the mid medium to the long term. You can be able to make a very good return on equities. And more so to the retail investors, the people who are younger, come and buy shares today. Appreciate and tap into these opportunities, earn a dividend, make money when the prices go up. This is the right time to pay attention to the market. Second thing I'd like to say to the companies, if you are looking to actually fund your businesses, your expansion and your operations, then the NSC is the place to be. We have a solution and a proposition for the SMEs, which is the NSC Connect. We would like you to come and either raise a corporate bond in our markets or open up your opportunities to select investors or to even a wider range of investors. So consider the capital markets as your next best friend outside of the banking sector. We are always here and open and happy to support you all. And as always, I would like to say God bless you, God bless Kenya, and thank you for your time today. Wow, thank you so much. Mbidha Muema there, Chief Business Office in Nairobi Securities Exchange. Thank you once again. You're welcome. That brings us to the end of this conversation right here. Of course, very optimistic. Mbidha Muema saying, you know what, this is the best time for you to get in. We want to leave you with this. Please be peaceful all around. Kenya belongs to all of us. And as Mbidha has put it across, we keep praying and hoping that peace shall always prevail for us to do business well. Thank you so much for your time once again. I leave you now with the markets.